I've actually made some other videos on how to play backgammon and thought that I would just play through a game so that people can watch both sides get played. I'm going to play against the uh, computer. So let's start. Each player rolls one dice. Let's go. Looks like I lost. So they, I got a one. They got a three. They took a three and a one. I see they moved three here, and then they moved one there. Not my suggested roll. I have a video that lays out all of the best opening moves, and five and the three is actually a great opening move. It's a great defensive move because you can move this one five and this one three and make a point. They've got a four and a six, and they've placed men four and a six right there. Not Again, not my favorite move. I don't think they did a great job. So now I have double twos, and I always talk about playing a great defensive game, and in this particular case, there is a way to play a great defensive game with these double twos. On the one hand, while I could move these over and I could move these down, the best move for me right now, I believe, would be to move one, two, which builds up this board. But I also, at this point, could take one and two because it's going to take them a lot of effort to get back on the board. In fact, they could only, they rolled a two and a four. The four was blocked. They could only get back on the board with the two. So they still have a man on the board. It allows me to have a free move here. And I've got doubles again, which I love. Now, these can't be moved because five is to there, so I can't move that five. Another option would be for me to continue to close out this board, and I could put two right there. That's two fives right there, which actually I'm going to do. But since I have four fives, the first I'm going to do, I'll take two of these down, and then I'm going to take one, two. And I'm continuing to close off the board to make it hard for this guy to get back on the board. He could only get on now with a two or a six, or two and a five. He got the two, and then he moved a P6. But what he's got is he's got a difficult situation to get out of here. Now, I see he's playing a great defense because he's making it difficult for me to get out of here as well. We have a six and a three. So none of these can move six, nor can this move six. So it's time to start focusing on the, the pieces up here. It's going to look like I'm going to get closed in soon. So I'm going to take the risk to go three and six and get one of these men out. Now, yes, by doing that, it's possible that their men down here could take me off. I'd rather get out now before he closes the board on me. And a six and a one. So he didn't get me. And in fact, if anything, he, he took, made a bad move and he's putting himself exposed there, should I get a one? So let's see what happens. Well, I didn't get a one, but I'll tell you what I did get. I got a four and a five. Technically, I could move this four. I could move it another five, and then I'm completely out, and I'm safe. So I have to be careful moving forward now as I roll. If I really didn't want to leave an exposed man, I could move this one four and the other one five. The other thing I could do is to move a five and then continue this down four. This keeps me safe. And it puts a man there. And so that's what I'm going to do. Wow, great move. Double sixes. But he can't move. So he gets four sixes, but he can't move these because of these two men here. So he's definitely starting to build his back game. But the best thing I have going is these men here can't get moved. I just have to be very careful. So now I have a three and a four. And this is going to put me into a bit of a situation because there isn't a move that's I can make that's going to leave an exposed man. If I was to move these three and four, I would leave an exposed man. If I was to move, say, this four and three, I'd leave an exposed man up there. And if I was to move this, whether three and four or even together, I'm still leaving an exposed man. So the question really becomes, where is the best place to keep an exposed man? What would minimize the damage? In this particular case, I'm also going to worry a little bit less about it because they have three open men here. So if they were to take me off the board, it's most likely I can get one of them off the board when I come back and put them back here on my board, which is closing quickly. But I'm going to do this because the exposed man I'm leaving, if I get taken off, it's not going that far back. Also, this is, is safe. So the good news is he didn't get a three. So he wasn't able to take me off. He's trying to make a move to get out of here. I see he's built his board. Let's see what happens. So a three and a four. And I would love to be able to just take him off. But at this point, I'm ahead in the game. I just want to be safe. I've got another three and a four. So I might as well just clean myself up so that I can't be taken off. 
as you can see, he's leaving himself very exposed here. So let's take a five and a two. It puts me into an interesting situation because on the one hand, I could completely go two and five and just be completely safe here. On the other hand, I could take him off with the two and then go five. The only thing I would be risking is if he got back on the board and then had a one, he could take me off. I think I may do that, though, just because I feel a little lucky and I feel ahead. So two, and I'm going to continue on the additional five. And he's good. So he got on with the five, but had, say had he had a five and a one, he would have then taken me off. So he's still here. And I've got one man I want to cover him up this turn. So a five and a three. I can move him five. I can't go three because that's there. So I'm going to leave him here, but I can certainly move this one three. And I just need to start playing a safe game here until these two men are gone. I see he's slowly moving his men around. So this is a four and a one. One, I'm not going to uh, leave an exposed man, so I'm going to then continue. One, two, three, four. And I've got the time since um, this guy can't move these two here. And eventually he's going to be forced to move it because once these two are in, there really isn't many more moves that he'll be able to do. So I've got another four and a one. I'll do it again. One, one, two, three, four. I'm very content moving these in very slowly. And he is waiting, I guess, to maybe get doubles to move that piece out. Or maybe he's trying to play defense with me in case I make a mistake. So here's the three and a four. Again, I could move. I can't move one, three, and one, four. I don't want to do anything that would expose me. So I can go three and four, which is seven, all the way to the end. He's still not moving his piece. He's definitely waiting to see if I'm going to wind up leaving myself exposed here. So I have a one and a two, and I would leave myself exposed if I did anything here. So I'm going to have to go two and one. I'm going to close that piece off, and I'm still safe. Now, with the next high roll, he's going to be forced to move. If he gets a six on his next board, he has no other six. So... Um, three and a four, but again, I can't move. I don't want to leave an exposed man here, so I'm going to go three and a four by moving this one three, one, two, three, and this one four, one, two, three, four. I'm trying to say doubled up, not single. So he's managed to save another roll before he has to move that. So let's just hope I can avoid getting taken off. Five and three, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a risk here because I have one, two. Oh, it's five and two. Okay. So I'm going to have to go one, two, three, four, five. It's my only five I can take. So then the question is, is for the remaining two, do I come here and hope he doesn't get a one? Or do I just continue here? I'm actually going to bring this in and hope he doesn't get a one. Um, it's, the only, it's a risk, but we'll see. And it did not work for me. But that's okay. He has two men to bring around, and I have a pretty... Um, it's pretty open here. Hopefully I can get back on the board quickly. There's a four and a one. So he's going to start to move his men around and we're going to, we're going to meet again. So my hope is to be able to pass him one, one, two, three, four. I actually have no other four. So, so let's see. Well, he got me again and he's still coming around and double threes. I can't get on the board. So very nice. So let's see what I can do here. I've got a six and I've got a five. Now, by doing this, I'm officially past him and it becomes a race. And to tell you the truth, the boards now look pretty equal. There's a very good chance I could say lose this. And he's already got one man off and now he's got three men off. So I'm going to need doubles just to catch up. Six and one. He has men, more men on the one, and he got the doubles. Okay. I may lose this game here. I can take off a one, I can take off a two, and I'm going to hope for some doubles. Six and one. And a little bit of doubles. I may still need one more double, though. Three and four. And, hey, I got that. So it doesn't necessarily mean he won't get a doubles right now and beat me. Um... But it does mean that I need yet another doubles or he's going to beat me. Any roll he gets next turn, he wins. I have to get three men off, so I must get doubles now or I lose. 
So I have lost this game. But hope you enjoyed watching it. Bye.